What do you think is the best merchandise for an artist to create and sell? We have a wide variety of options to turn art and designs into physical products and merchandise. Prints, stickers, keychains and pins are some of the most popular choices in any artist alleys. And while some of these can easily be created at home with the right equipment, some goods, such as animal pins, will require you to go to a manufacturer. For years, I've been wanting to grow my merch lineup with these pins, but... I was intimidated by the price and the complex production. Not anymore. I'm really happy to say that for this video I'm collaborating with GSJJ, one of the largest and most popular customization platforms, and I will show you everything you need to know about making animal pins, even if it's your first time. I'm also hosting a giveaway, so make sure you stick till the end. Welcome to the Saigami Project. I'm Sunny, a full-time freelance artist, and I create videos on anything an aspiring creative can need to kickstart their career and make a living as an artist. Physical products can be a huge factor in any art business, but they are also super fun and valuable for hobby creators as well. In my opinion, animal pins are one of the coolest merchandise an artist can make. I myself am a big fan, and I can just never resist getting some whenever I get the chance. There's just something very special about them that buttons or stickers can't compare to. They just feel more premium. And whenever I was observing other sellers in artist alleys, I always made my conclusion that if an artist sells animals, they really must know their stuff and are not afraid to invest in their merch. Of course, anyone could get into turning their art and designs into animal pins, but here are some of the most common obstacles people like myself are often intimidated by. Price. Animal pins are not the cheapest to produce, and the lesser amount you order, the more the per piece cost will be. They can be sold at a higher price, of course, creating a great profit margin, but for smaller artists or new sellers, it can be risky to order in a huge batch. Complex production. Unlike other merch, like prints or stickers, animals have a completely different method of production, so you can't just take your JPEG and slap it onto a product. More on this in a bit. Working with Chinese manufacturers can be convoluted. If you want the best prices, you gotta go through Chinese manufacturers. However, communication often can be puzzling, shipping and customs can turn into a nightmare, middleman companies might not be able to resolve problems and fixes, so it's always a huge gamble until you find a good company to work with in the long run. And this is where today's sponsor GSJJ comes in. With over 20 years of experience in producing customized products, any artist can turn to them and not have to worry about these problems. GSJJ will make sure your experience is smooth, fast and satisfying. They work directly with the manufacturers in China and ensure your needs are met and communicate with you clearly through the whole process as well as provide you with factory prices. Their team can help you through the whole design process free of charge and you can even create designs from scratch on their homepage which can make things easier for people who are not necessarily well versed in creating digital designs or artworks aimed at mass production. They also provide free shipping to the US, UK, Canada and Australia which is always Always a huge plus to any artist on a budget. Their product lineup includes lapel pins, patches, coins, medals, belt buckles, keychains, lanyards, wristbands, and more. Of course, for this one, we will be focusing on the animal pins. Making animal pins 101. For this collaboration, I needed two designs, so I decided to make one for my favorite ship, Bumblebee from Ruby, and one for my manga series Saigami. Special thanks to my dear friend Sean, who's an experienced animal creator, and let me bomb her with my questions. Good news for all of you who might not have a Sean, GSJJ will be right there to help you through it all. Really, they are excellent at communication. For my Bumblebee pin, I chose an iconic scene from the series and decided to turn an already existing artwork into an animal design, which meant simplification. Hardcore. In case of animal pins, you want to work with a set number of flat colors and every single color will have to be separated by the line art. You also need to keep the size of your pin in mind. The smaller it is, the less room you will have for details and you want to avoid tiny shapes that would be hard to work with during the manufacturing. If the character you want to turn into an animal has too many details, you either will need to skip and simplify things or you might think about going for a chibi or maybe just a headshot. Profile views with eyes closed are very common among animal pins for their easy production. You also need a line art that's clean and has the same line weight. For me, this was very different from my usual drawing style, but you can just pick a brush that will provide you the same size through your drawing. 
You also have a bunch of creative options such as using screen printing to add details or shading. In my case, I use this for adding depth to the flower on the ruby pin and an extra color for Ayumi's hair on the Saigami one, but you can create blushes, white of the eyes if you don't want to have an outline for them, patterns or additional colors for whatever you may need them for. You can also play around with add-ons such as glitter, which I did. I added it to the flames on the Saigami pin for this cool effect and it turned out super shiny. Love it. But depending on what you go for, you can add transparent colors, epoxy dome, rhinestones, glow in the dark effect, hanging chains, sliders, spinners, laser engraving, and so on. It's crazy. I love it. If this is your first time, all of these options might feel a bit overwhelming and tempting to go for everything, but remember that the less can be more and a good design created with these add-ons in mind can work out much better than you trying to add all in like a Christmas tree decoration. You can see a lot of examples on GSGG's homepage too, but you can also find inspiration online, on Pinterest, Etsy, and literally anywhere where you can find artists posting. Once you have your design ready, it will be worked over into this format for production, including Pantone numbers for colors, marked all the add-ons, the location of the pin needles, and sizing. You will also get to make the modifications in this stage. In my case, I forgot to mark the glitter on all of the flames, and there were some tiny fixes here and there that were immediately handled by the design team at GSGJ, and on the second try, I had the finished designs ready to be produced. It took about two weeks for these to be manufactured, 50 of each design, which is a pretty good turnaround. And once they were done, the whole package arrived super fast via FedEx. And don't forget, it's free shipping in North America. The pins came securely packed in bubble wrap, and each one of them is also packaged individually to protect them from scratches and to make storing easier. I also did receive extra copies, which can happen with manufacturing, and it's always a lovely surprise. If you ever purchased animal pins, you might know that creators usually list them in A and B grades, or in unlucky cases, C grade quality categories. Just like with anything mass produced, there can be some small mistakes or aesthetic issues. With animal pins, the most common inaccuracies are tiny specks of dust or paint on the pins, or if you use screen printing or other add-ons, there can happen some slip-ups as well. It's up to everyone's discretion and preferences on how they grade the pins, if it's very visible or it's on the character's face, you might want to categorize it as a B grade, while other specs might not even be noticed by others unless they're really trying to find something. B grade products are usually sold on a lower price and can be preferred by people who don't mind small mistakes on the pins in favor of a cheaper purchase. Honestly, whenever I get pins for my backpack, I often go for a B grade as I know that I likely will either scratch or lose that pin soon enough, so might as well save a few bucks. In my case, I ended up with 7 B grades for both designs, so about 15% ratio, which is a pretty good rate actually, as it's not uncommon for artists to have 20 or even 30% with other manufacturers, so I was very happy with the numbers here. As I mentioned before, manufacturing animal pins is costly, especially since you always have to calculate with a mold fee per design as well. On GSJJ's homepage, you can play around with the quick order or free quote function, which is super helpful and easy to navigate through, even if you're completely new to this. For an easy reference, the 100 animal pins they produced for me, the cost for that was $640, including $90 mold charge fee for both designs. So that's about $6.4 per pin. Pricing of your products is always up to the artist. Animal pins of this size tend to sell between $10 and $20. For simplicity and practicality, I created a spreadsheet to break down pricing, profits, and what you would need to sell to break even. I will make a more in-depth video on pricing and profit margins, but in the meantime, this spreadsheet will also be available for anyone to make a copy of and use. But as you can see, animal pins can be a damn great investment, as they can bring in a lot of profit and happy customers. If you're still finding the investment upfront risky, the best practice is to do an interest check for your designs, and many artists rely on crowdfunding such as Kickstarter to raise funds for animal productions without putting their own finances at jeopardy. All in all, my very first experience at creating animal pins was very pleasant thanks to JSJJ, and it dissolved a lot of my fears and worries, and it's really reassuring to know that I can rely on this company anytime I will want to expand my merch line, and I won't have to stress 
silver production or customs. I can wholeheartedly recommend their service to any creatives who want customized products, not just Anamapins. They also have a friend referral system where you can all save money and get points to redeem. And I don't know about you, but I always love me some nice discounts. Check out the link in the video description or the pinned comment to get your own pins or simply just to explore the site and all the options you have. Once again, I would like to thank GSJJ for this collaboration and for these lovely pins. Both of these designs will be up for purchase in my coffee store, but I also want to host a giveaway so you can win some goodies too. I will be giving away three Saigami pins this time for three randomly selected winners. All you have to do is just leave a comment below with what is your favorite type of merchandise. Winners will be selected and announced in the community page of my channel. And if you enjoyed this video and would be interested in more, please don't forget to subscribe. It's a free click for you, but it helps this channel grow a lot. Special thanks of course to all of my lovely supporters on Patreon, the real MVP squad. And don't forget that my comic book Saigami Volume 1 is available in bookstores and Walmarts in North America, the UK, Australia and online worldwide. Volume 2 comes out next summer, but in the meantime you can find more content from me here and on my socials. Next video will drop very soon, so stay tuned, stay safe and keep on making art that makes you happy. Sending out.